Hey, Simon Jones here from hitfilm.com with a little tutorial on how to turn still images into 3D scenes. So this is what we're going to be making. You can see we've got some nice 3D rain which the camera is moving through and as the camera pushes in and tilts up you get this nice parallax and perspective going on with the trees and this foreground ruin. Uh, this is actually created purely from this still image. So we're going to show how to change this into this. Okay, let's get started. So first off, we'll bring in our image to hit film. And then we're going to make ourselves a composite shot, just do a standard 720p. And we'll bring in our image. So the first thing to do is we shall switch this to 3D. That will add a camera. And we can now move around this in 3D however we want. Uh, of course it's still just a single flat image which uh, isn't particularly useful for the effect we're going for. So what we're going to do is duplicate the image down on the timeline here. That's control D, duplicates the layer. And then if we take the ruins here, we're going to quickly switch to the front view so that we can see the whole image. Go to the freehand mask, make sure we've got the right one selected. And then really quickly this is going to be kind of rough because it's not absolutely crucial to what we're doing. Uh, obviously if you're doing this for real you want to do this with a little bit more care. Uh, but we're just going to really quickly draw a mask around this foreground part of the ruins. Just connect up with the first point. Okay, so we've got a mask. Uh, you didn't see anything actually change there. Let's just move him out. Because we've got the original layer beneath as well. So if we turn that off you can see that we've now got this layer on its own completely separate. Now let's rename these so we know exactly what's going on. We'll call this foreground and the original can be background. You can see where I'm going with the naming policy there. So at the moment both these layers are existing on exactly the same space. So if we switch to perspective view you can see that it looks like there's actually just one layer whereas in fact we have two. We've got the foreground and we've got the background. So let's take the background and push it back in space, like this. So now we've got the foreground and the background at slightly different depths. If we switch back to our active camera, we'll uh, pull our camera back so we can see the foreground a little bit more. But the background, we're now going to scale up so that it fills the whole screen. Uh, around about there. And now you'll see that as we move the camera, you immediately get this sense of perspective because the foreground is closer to us than the background. And similarly, if we uh, start orbiting around, you get this sense of the scene being three-dimensional. On top of this, we're now going to add some rain. Handily, HitFilm has its own built-in rain, which exists as a 3D effect. If we switch back out to our perspective view, you can see that the rain is actually existing in full 3D along with the layers. And now, if we just zoom back in, as we push in, we actually move through the rain as well. So we've got multiple levels of perspective going on. Obviously with this kind of faked camera move, you don't want to push it too far because you'll either start to see the edges or the illusion starts to break up. So small movements like this works really well. And again, if you just move around ever so slightly like this, you can see it just gives you that extra sense of depth. Uh, this is really good if you want to do an establishing shot, but you've only got an image, or maybe if you're doing some motion graphics, maybe a slideshow of some sort, and you can actually bring your images to life rather than just being static on screen, which isn't terribly interesting. Uh, something else I did is put in a lens flare that was mapped to a 3D point. So we've got this bright area up here, and uh, to blend everything together, let's do exactly that. So we're going to take a plane, Make a black plane, stick that right on top, and we're going to add a light flare. So there we go, we've immediately got our nice light flare here. And we're going to change the blend of the plane to screen, so that we can still see what's going on behind it. Now we could position this light flare manually, uh, so just grab this and stick it up here. But the problem with that is that as the camera moves, the light flare stays exactly where it is, which completely breaks the illusion of the 3D, as you can see. So what we're actually going to do 
is add a point. Points can be used, as we've talked about in some previous tutorials, to link other things too. So we're going to change this point into 3D. Currently it's just sitting down here. Let's go back out to our perspective view. So here's our point just floating around waiting to be used. I'm actually going to push it back all the way back here so that it looks kind of like it's in the distance. If we go back to our active camera, shift the point over and up, more or less into the position we want it to be. And now if we go back to our light flare, we can go in here to the hotspot position and link it to the point. We also want to set this to zero, 0, so that it stays exactly on the point. So you can see it's in position and now if we move around, the lens flare stays exactly where we want it. And even if we orbit, the lens flare is doing what we expect. So you know, if we look up here, you can see it's working there. If we actually change this particular flare to something a little more extreme, just so we can see what's going on, let's go for the flashlight white, and we'll actually scale it up and uh, increase its intensity just for the example so you can see what's going on. So now you can see as we move, all those artifacts are doing exactly what you expect. We'll actually turn off the floor plane so you can see a bit better. You can see that the uh, the lens flare elements down the bottom here are moving with the camera. And of course now that we've got this set up we can now animate our camera and do whatever we want and the end result is as we saw before. Something a little bit like this. Put on a little bit of grading here as well. And you can see that the lens flare is moving automatically as the camera moves. Something else we did is apply a slight displacement to the rain. Uh, hopefully it can show up on the tutorial, but you can see that where the rain falls, it's actually leaving a kind of shimmery effect. You see that in computer games used quite a lot. And it just makes it look less like an overlay and more like something real is happening. So at the moment, you can see there's no displacement happening. So to make that, we're actually going to take our rain effect, turn it into a composite shot. So there we've just got a rain on, our, on its own, but back in our main comp, it's still here and we're going to create a grade layer. Grade layers are used to grade any layers that are beneath them, amongst other things, but that's what we're using it for here. So we're actually going to drop this grade layer down below the rain effect, but above our foreground and background. And then we'll add a displacement layer to the grade layer, and we want to set this to the rain composite shot and change these settings to alpha so that it's getting the information from the transparency. And now if we change this, and just zoom in so you can see what's happening, you can see that where the rain is, it's displacing the stuff behind it. You can see it particularly here. If we run through, you can see we've now got this interesting distortion effect going on, as if the camera is trying to see through actual water. Obviously, how extreme you want that effect to be, you can control just by adjusting these settings here. Now, because we've changed the rain to a composite shot, it actually means it is currently existing as a 2D plane in the shot. So if you move our camera around, you can see we're not moving through the rain. It's staying exactly where it is. That's obviously not what we want from this particular shot. So we're actually going to duplicate this. We'll keep uh, the original as the displacement layer. And then this new one that we duplicated, we're going to change to 3D unrolled. So now if we push forward, you can see that we're moving through some of the rain there's still something not quite right and that's because we've still got the original 2D one on so we'll turn that off and you can see we've now got the displacement still happening but as we move through we are pushing through the rain as well and then the end result is something a little bit like this there's obviously lots of uses for this uh, this is just one particular image you can grab any image as long as it's got a little bit of depth to it cut it up and have multiple layers you can see that in this example I actually cut it into three layers so we've got the foreground We've got the middle section at the back here, and then we've actually got the trees in the far background. Okay, hope this was useful. Don't forget there's a full demo of HitFilm, so even if you don't own it, you can go and try out these techniques. You can find everything out about it over at hitfilm.com. We've got more of these coming up, so do subscribe if you're interested, and thank you for watching.